big problems in most dog sports is that we have to leave all of our primary reinforcers in one space, usually on our chair or by our crate, and ask the dog to go into a totally different space altogether to perform the behaviors that make up the competition. Why on earth would dogs want to leave the source of known reinforcement and go into this high pressure space and do hard work? They know perfectly well there's no reinforcement there. We need a way to connect the performance in the ring with the reinforcement that's only available outside the ring. We need a behavior chain. But what's a behavior chain? Well, a behavior chain is a really cool phenomenon where behaviors are performed in sequence, linked together by learned cues. So as each behavior finishes, the cue for the next behavior is given, and the chain flows continuously. And the best part is that when set up correctly, the behavior chain is more or less self-maintaining. But for this to work for us, we have to have a couple of requirements that have to be met. All of the component behaviors must be fluent and on cue individually. That means they have to happen without hesitation in this context, and they have to be under stimulus control. That's critical. The cues must have positive associations, so a poison cue won't work well here. The cues must also be well-timed, so there's some training and handler skill that has to be learned. The cue has to happen as the preceding behavior is finishing for the chain to flow continuously, and that's a skill that both dogs and humans have to learn. But when these factors are met, each cue acts as an event marker and a conditioned reinforcer for the previous behavior, and that's what maintains the chain. Isn't that cool? So our entire performance in the ring is a behavior chain, where the exercises are linked together, eventually ending with access to that primary reinforcer. Now, of course, the exercises themselves break down into chains of complex behaviors, but there are many other courses in the academy that can teach you those skills. But you'll notice if we just focus on the exercises, we're missing something important. We have gaps. We need to be able to connect the performance of that last exercise in the ring to access to the primary reinforcement that's outside the ring. We need to have a plan to transition from one exercise to the next without any gaps. And we need to include leaving the source of reinforcement to enter the ring to perform the whole thing. And that's exactly what this class is about. So here are our objectives. We're going to teach the dog the concept of cues as reinforcers. Dogs have expectations, and if a particular behavior or exercise has always been reinforced with a specific reinforcer like food, and we suddenly change it, then we're going to see frustration, we're going to see confusion if we do that all of a sudden without any kind of training plan. So we need to introduce this concept gradually. We've probably all experienced that when we switched from food to a toy. If you've always reinforced it with food and then you try to bring out a ball, the dog often acts a little bit confused, or vice versa. We're going to teach the dog to perform behaviors in succession. Performing different behaviors in succession increases the cognitive load. It makes doing things harder, so we need to account for that when we make our training plans. We're going to teach the dog to move into a different space in order to access reinforcement. And we're going to design specific behavior chains to fill in those gaps. And we'll accomplish those objectives by breaking it down, starting with simple sequences of simple behaviors, gradually building up to more complex sequences with more complex behaviors. We'll take advantage of existing Zen games and behaviors that you have to reinforce that contingency of moving from one space to another to access that reinforcement. We'll work on filling in those gaps by teaching specific behaviors and making them into sequences that transition us from one exercise to the other and from in the ring and out to the ring. And then we'll put it all together and make sure that it's actually going to work in real life because we need to take this out of the laboratory and into the dog show to get the result that you want, a happy performance that's maintained through the career of your dog.